mantra of be better late than never uh, this week um, and we're going to read, listen uh, to what scripture has to say for us today and then pray about it. Hebrews chapter 12, the contemporary English version. Such a large crowd of witnesses is all around us. So we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just won't let go. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. We must keep our eyes on Jesus who leads us and makes us makes our faith complete. He endured the shame of being nailed to a cross because he knew that later on he would be glad he did. Now he is seated at the right side of God's throne. So keep your mind on Jesus who put up with many insults from sinners. Then you won't get, get discouraged and give up. None of you yet have yet been hurt in your battle against sin, but you have forgotten that the scriptures say to God's children. When the Lord punishes you, don't make light of it. And when he corrects you, don't be discouraged. The Lord corrects the people he loves and disciplines those he calls his own. Be patient when you are being corrected. This is how God treats his children. Don't all parents correct their children? God corrects all of his children and if he doesn't correct you, then you don't really belong to him. Our earthly fathers correct us and we still respect them. Isn't it even better to be given true life by letting our spiritual father correct us? Our few human fathers correct us for a short time and they do it as they think best. But God corrects us for our own good because he wants us to be holy as he is. It is never fun to be corrected. In fact, at the time, it is always painful. But if we learn to obey by being corrected, we will do right and live at peace. Now stand up straight. Stop your knees from shaking and walk a straight path. Then lame people will be healed instead of getting worse. Try to live at peace with everyone. Live a clean life. If you don't, you will never see the Lord. Make sure that no one misses out on God's wonderful kindness. Don't let anyone become bitter and cause trouble for the rest of you. Watch out for the immoral and ungodly people like Esau, who sold his future blessing for only one meal. You know, uh, later he wanted it back, but there was nothing he could do to change things, even though he begged his father and cried. You have not come to a place like Mount Sinai that can be seen and touched. There is no flaming fire or dark cloud or storm or trumpet sound. The people of Israel heard a voice speak, but they begged it to stop because they couldn't obey its commands. They were even told to kill any animal that touched the mountain. The sight was so frightening that Moses said he shook with fear. You have now come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem. This is the city of the living God where thousands and thousands of angels have come to celebrate. Here you will find all of God's dearest children, whose names are written in heaven. And you will find God himself, who judges everyone. Here also are the spirits of those good people who have been made perfect. And Jesus is here. He is the one who makes God's new agreement with us. And his sprinkled blood says much better things than the blood of Abel. Make sure that you, you, you obey the one who speaks to you. The people did not escape when they refused to obey the one who spoke to them at Mount Sinai. Do you think that you can possibly escape? If you refuse to obey the one who speaks to you from heaven. When God spoke the first time, his voice shook only the earth. This time he has promised to shake the earth once again and heaven too. The words once again mean that these things, these created things someday will be shaken and removed. <sighs> then what cannot be shaken will last. We should be grateful that we were giving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And in this kingdom, we please God by worshipping him and showing him great honour and respect. Our God is like a destructive fire. In some ways, I think that this chapter might be quite polarising. It's a picture, an image of God that maybe some will struggle with because here we're talking about the fierce holiness of God. And we often speak of God in terms 
of like it did at the beginning fatherhood or motherhood or or you know love and that bond and that reaching out to us and the holiness uh sort of side of god that was very much stressed in the old testament perhaps is more difficult for us to comprehend it's true how hebrews begin that really none of us like being corrected if we do something wrong it's hard to hear it especially if you've done something wrong and you were actually really trying to get it right and they go mm, you've missed the mark here but we don't grow without correction or pointing out where we could have uh, done better and there are many ways that we see correction as almost like it ought not to have happened that that's one of the reasons that we respond so badly and yet corrections a natural part of life is that the fact is you can't see everything you can't know um everything and sometimes somebody will have a perspective about uh, life or about a situation that you've not really considered i know that um for me, and we, we touched on running in this chapter, run a good race uh, a little bit. Um, if I'm if I'm looking at coaching and I look at somebody's form, so that means the way that they run, I can observe what they're doing and say, oh, you need to do this, this, this and this to improve. But I won't be able to have that objective look at myself. I mean, potentially I could record myself and then play it back. But it's hard. It's hard to judge yourself. Even so, like uh, when you write, you, it's always better to get somebody else to edit it because you can't see your own mistakes because it's difficult. It's difficult to see where we go wrong. And so understanding correction and that actually God just wants us to be better, the best that we can be. What God, God has created something wonderful with each and every one of us and living up to that is hard and it might mean at times that we need to step back and say I've missed the mark here that's not an easy thing for anyone but what do you think about this chapter perhaps there was something different that struck you uh, if so as always I'd love to hear about it let's pray Lord God, we have all had various people within our lives that have offered us guidance. Guidance and sometimes correction. We thank you for those important people who have come with us along our journeys. We thank you that in the future there will be more people to walk alongside us. Lord God, we are so grateful that as we come in prayer, in worship, as we read scripture and think that your spirit is speaking to us. And we ask uh, that our hearts be humble, that we allow ourselves to be corrected when it's necessary. Help us, Lord, to accept these things, that we might go on and become better, that we might press forward in all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.